Welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about an absolute pandemonium-like, chaos-induced, record-breaking Bitcoin drop. Well, I don't know if it broke any records, but for a lot of people, especially new entrants to the space brought in by JPEG Mania, this is probably going to be an absolute shocker. For a lot of those people out there who have been through this many, many times, you might be sitting cozy or even comfortable right now, but ooh he. Did we get an absolute doozy here on the daily chart? Just look at this. I'm going to make myself small so you can see this daily candle. Oh, my me. Oh, my me. Look at that. That is absolutely wild. Now, we're going to be talking about all of what's caused this and what I believe comes next. If you guys are feeling a little bit unsettled, if you guys are feeling like you want a little bit of guidance, then this is the program for you. But I'm going to need some likes smashed. First and foremost, this is an emergency broadcast. So smash those likes so we can share this knowledge with everybody because not only am I going to be telling you why this happened, not only am I going to be laying out what exactly led to this situation and what comes next, but I'm going to be giving you some actionable steps as to what I'm doing for the next few minutes, hours, days. And I believe this is going to be absolute required viewing. So make sure you smash that like button. If you guys are not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Hop into the comments for a second here uh, and just say hello to everybody. Um, let me go ahead and mute this. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Every call you do is wrong, Elio. Yep, I'm so wrong. I'm so wrong. Um, Soul and FTM. Yep, absolutely nonstop. Phantom, I brought you guys at three cents. That was really wrong, wasn't it? It's only up, uh, what, like 30x? Um, yep. And for the people who are impatient here, this is a good example of someone who's just not going to make it, right? If you see everything on a very short time span, then you're absolutely not going to make it. And I can't help you. I really can't help you if you don't know how to help yourself. If you don't understand that this game of crypto is a bunch of psychological warfare, if you don't understand that there are big, big entities out there that do not want you to make it, that do not want you to get rich, they want you to panic sell on dips. They want you to absolutely relinquish your shot at owning a piece of these networks works because this is so obviously the future. This is so obviously the future. And on a day like today, where we have a full nation adopting Bitcoin, you can't help but, I guess, appreciate the irony, appreciate that right now we're seeing Bitcoin being, uh, I guess, entering the sphere of public battleground here for a monetary policy. What we're seeing is that there are a ton of actors out there that do not want you to hold on to your Bitcoin. Why? We just had a nation, El Salvador, uh, make this legal tender. And on the very day that it goes live as legal tender, we get a massive washout of liquidity. We're going to be telling you exactly what happened here because this isn't any normal dip. This is a very, very uh, clear dip triggered by a liquidity or a leveraged washout. People who are betting leverage with money they don't have, which is why we tell you time and time again not to do this with your coins, are the ones who got wiped out here. Billions of dollars of their value got flushed down the toilet because they were gambling with money they didn't have. That's why you sit in spot, you chill, and you hodl good projects so that when days like this come, you are not the one paying the bill and you're not having to start over from scratch. But if days like this happen and your feeling is, oh my God, it was all a lie, then you're being played 100%. You're 100% you're drinking the Kool-Aid that they want to serve you, and you're not seeing the truth of these networks, which is that, of course, there's going to be ridiculous drawdowns. There always are, and that's why we talk about this literally every day that there are going to be drawdowns. However, of course, I was hoping this thing would break up. Again, didn't break up, but does that mean that we rush to sell everything? Of course not. And I'm going to be showing you that not only are the dips being bought up here, but they're being bought up like crazy. And that the actual net uh, buying and selling pressure is now flipped to buying dips have been bought here. However, understanding what happened, what happens next is key, especially if you're a newbie out there and you think that just because for a few hours the price turned against you, that the whole movement is done, then you are absolutely playing the game wrong. And I don't want to be this harsh, but you need to hear this stuff on days like today because this is absolutely the time where the newbies and the weak hands get shaken out and all that money ends up in the hands of what's increasingly become an institutional war zone where these big entities will do what they can do to wipe out the market. I told you, I told you the last few days that greed and that funding was starting to grow. I told you guys that essentially what we were seeing here was that uh, we were seeing the leverage in the market grow here. Um, I put up this chart on my Twitter. You can see this. Uh, this, as you see in the red zones, shows when the global leverage ratio starts to get really high. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't go up, 
right? Look at this global, this, this happened right before the November rush. We got a lot of leverage trading here. Um, and this also happened again at the top. But that doesn't mean that this can't be happening right before a big run. But when this happens, when you get a ton of leverage in the market and we start entering into the red zone here, what that means is that little price changes to the tune of 5% or 10% can effectively liquidate a ton of people causing an absolutely cascading reaction. And that's exactly what we had happen here. So let's go through this because we had $2.7 billion of liquidations in one hour, $2.7 billion. And it all happens, 90% of it at least happens on Bybit. And this is why this is why Bybit, which is essentially where all of the noobs go because they, they pay out the influencers here, which is why I never promote Bybit links and I never promote leverage trading. I did for a while have it in my bio saying for experts only, but I actually removed that because look, in the end, I just don't want to be contributing any liquidity to this because this is bad to the, for the whole market. This Bybit thing is bad for the whole market, right? And so when Bybit gets leveraged like this, it creates a cascading effect. Now, look, if you know what you're doing, this is an opportunity, right? Everyone else's dump, it could be one man's opportunity. But the reality is, is that 99% of people get shaken so hard when this happens, and it's really sad to see. So let's go through this. $2.6 billion worth of positions liquidated in the last hour, mostly on Bybit as usual. It's become a meme, right? Because everybody knows that the noobs are on Bybit. And of course, when you look at Bitfinex and FTX, there's not a lot of liquidations because they are not playing the game like noobs. They're playing the game like pros. So as you see, this is the from noob to pro, how this liquidity flows. So when you see on Bybit, the liquidity, it's almost like a counter trading signal. When you see the liquidity on Bybit go way too long, way too over leveraged long, you can probably imagine that there's a big, big short incoming or vice versa, right? So anyway, the point is that we need to see what happened next here, which is, uh, the, uh, according to Willy Woo here, the day opened with equ equities risk off. There was some sell down on BTC. And then there was a stop hunt and a liquidity collapse with billions of dollars in liquidity and uh, in, in liquidations. But now exchanges are in outflows again, meaning that we're in net buying territory again. So the bloodshed has occurred and it's behind us, according to Willy Woo's on-chain metrics here. And he says, not entirely sure WTF just happened, but that's the sequence of events. The sell-off was mainly derivatives market, mo uh, like most crashes. So understanding the derivatives market, which is where people borrow money that they do not have to bet on the price because they're so sure it's going to go in one direction, which by the way, throughout the entire week, I kept saying, I do not leverage trade. And this is why, because my positions are only momentarily affected on the charts. And as people buy the dip and the price comes back, Either I had the chance to allocate more to positions I believe in, stuff that's down 20, 30% today, or I'm just unaffected. I can just hodl and chill, right? If you're leveraged, you're doing it. I mean, unless you're a true pro trader, you're doing it wrong, right? Um, okay, so this is a little bit more about how the exchanges float. I'm gonna get to this in a second, but look at this. Look at this. Look at the buying pressure here on Coinbase. Look at the buying pressure here on Coinbase. Look at that. So just understand that there are absolutely moments where people jump in and buy during these. Um, and uh, as you see here, the uh, I think this is the president of, uh, I think this is the president of, uh, the president just said <laughs> the discount is ending. Um, I don't know whether it's uh, El Salvador or, yeah, okay, look, we just saw 14% price. This is the one I was trying to get to. We just saw a 14% price increase in Bitcoin in one hour. So this is what happens during these periods is people buy the dip and they get astronomical pops out of it. So these are huge opportunities. Now, whether this is going to continue down and there's going to be more continuation, we'll find out. But the point is when you understand the source of the dip, you can keep your cool and you can understand that very likely, very, very likely, what you're going to see is opportunities. We have had pretty much nonstop price accrual over the last, what is this? Look at this. Look, since we started this uh, this double bottom, we've had, what is this, almost 100% in Bitcoin. And look, very few, there was this one little red spurt, but it's been pretty, pretty green the whole time here. And then we get this one red candle. And as you can see, if we're looking at this horizontal line here, you can see that this uh, horizontal here, let me make myself a little smaller. You can see that this horizontal line here at about you know 47, uh, where is this, 46 uh, high 46, low 47. You can see how many points of contact it has here on the way up. It's resistance here, support, support. Uh, you can see that it was a, a little line of support, um, some resistance turn support. Um, and we can see here that it's bouncing very, very fluidly off of it and it's holding. And so 
All of these, to me, look like a temporary wash. Again, we're going to have to see if we get another aggressive move down. We'll see what happens. But to me, this is a very, very simple story of everyone who is new to this game, who doesn't understand that we've had the best of times of the last few weeks. And there's always going to be a rocky road, which is why you do not leverage trade. You do not leverage trade. Do not leverage trade because then you're pretty much giving your coins away, pure and simple. Um, and you're giving them to the institutions, to people who are going to hold these. If you think Bitcoin hasn't made it to the Citadel yet, then I don't know why you're watching this channel because it's so clear that Bitcoin, Ethereum, these assets are going the distance. And so these little, these little uh, price pivots along the way are momentary. Um, as Rand said, not a single NFT was liquidated today. Um, Rand with the jokes. Uh, but the point is here that if you're in assets that are not going to be subject to liquidation, you're doing crypto, right? If you're doing things in a risk on way where you're leveraging, I don't understand why you're doing that. There's already so many gains to be had. We're going to be coming to you with these low cap gaming gems, low cap NFT gems, low cap DeFi gems. Each one of these can easily multiply your money. So many X's. I don't understand why you'd leverage trade because otherwise you're going to be uh, feeding yourself to the sharks. We have Stephen Curry becoming a global ambassador and shareholder of leading cryptocurrency exchange FTX. We've been seeing Steph Curry get into the game here. Again, if you don't think mainstream adoption is coming, I don't know what story you're watching. Um, and just for a minute here, just for a minute, we see Uniswap and ETH transfers dethroning OpenSea as the number one gas burner. I wanted to get this tweet here. Where is this? Um, where is this? Before I go deeper, because I wanted to show you that we had this insane deflationary moment here for ETH. Where is this tweet? Um, let me bring it up here. Um, this is absolutely, absolutely crazy. Um, the amount of deflationary, here we go. Look at this. So we have here, Ethereum being burned in the last hour was over almost 2000 Ethereum were burned in the last hour. Meaning that if you were to annualize this, if you were to annualize this, we'd be at a 10% deflationary Ethereum, negative 10% issuance. That means that you're getting paid 10% at these rates of burning. And this is, this is supernatural rates of burning. But when these big events happen, when big gas fees happen, this is the sort of tale of two cities with Ethereum and why it was so freaking bullish when I realized that all of this congestion on Ethereum is just going to lead to a higher priced Ethereum. It's absolutely mind boggling when you see the compounding effects here, especially with the network effects of NFTs, which is 90% on Ethereum or more. You see here that you're actually having this crazy deflationary mechanism. How could you not be bullish on an asset that's got a negative 10% issuance and a network effect that's growing exponentially? It's just crazy. So understanding that all of these moments are moments where if you don't have a thesis and you don't know why you're doing this, you don't have a long-term vision and you don't have confidence and conviction in your assets, you're going to be the one panic selling down here instead of accumulating. I mean, let's look at the charts here. Um, beyond Solana, which is uh, apparently an indestructible up only asset, uh, who pumped and actually flipped XRP momentarily earlier, and it looks like they will do it again soon. Uh, they are just a, what is this, about $500 million shy. They were uh, higher than XRP just a moments ago. Um, so Solana is just on the charge. Absolutely crazy to see the growth of Solana. Um, and it pumped 11% on a day like today. So it shows you sometimes, I remember last year, Kusama and Dot were these assets that would pump on dip days because people would jump ship to those assets during the dip days. It seems like Solana has taken that flame, has taken that uh, pedestal from, oh, actually, let me get my uh, chart back in here. Let me get my chart back in here. I realized I didn't even have that ETH, uh, ETH tweet up. So let me get that ETH tweet. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, this is the ETH tweet, all right? This is how much ETH is being burned on a daily basis here or in the last two hours, we got 2000 ETH burned, which is a negative issuance of 10%. So for those people who missed that, um, and where was I? Lost my flow. Okay, so Solana now pumping 11% on the day is super indicative. And it reminds me of the sort of polka dot summer that happened last year where everything Kusama and Dot would pump on days that everything else would dump. It does have that September feel about it where everything got crushed all at once. But the resilience of the Bitcoin chart here is just something I think that everyone needs to keep in mind here. Nice bounce here. And hopefully we see some continuation to the upside. Um, just remember the liquidations and the leverage has just been wiped out. So a lot of that rocket fuel down was coming from leverage. And we were talking about this ad nauseum throughout the week. That leverage can either work as rocket fuel one way or the other. But remember this entire lead up, I've been saying, look, this is just weird that there hasn't been a dip. And as we started to break 52, 
I said, hey, look, well, maybe we'll just keep going, right? Um, but it's not normal for things to just go one direction only. So this dip so far hasn't shaken my conviction. It makes me, you know, I feel bad for people who have panic sold right now. But at the same time, uh, what we're seeing, in my opinion, is a hiccup as we have fundamentals continue to stack, continue to stack for Ethereum, for Bitcoin, which is now, as we'll see here, where is this tweet? Uh, and I know, and I know this stuff isn't like going to change everything, right? I lost all my tweet, my tweet orders. Where's, where's the McDonald's guy? There he is. So this guy literally walked into a McDonald's in San Salvador. And yes, I know, I know. I can see the memes coming in. Who cares about one little country making Bitcoin legal tender? But the reality is, is that this is freaking huge, right? That this guy's walking into McDonald's and paying with Bitcoin lightning network with a QR code. This is the future, right? This is the thing that they told us couldn't happen. They said you could never pay for your coffee with Bitcoin. They say that you could never pay for your breakfast, your desayuno tradicional with Bitcoin. They said it, but that's not true. We're seeing it happen. So people who want you to believe that something's not possible with these technologies, that's like saying, no, you can't watch movies on the internet in 1992. Guess what? We only watch movies on the internet now. That's all we do. So if you can't forecast the technological growth and the actual network upgrades that are coming to ETH, to Bitcoin, then you have not studied the history of the internet, the history of these technologies. And to understand that one day's price fluctuation, for you to miss the actual story going on here, for you to miss this because of this, you're definitely not going to make it. Definitely not. Definitely not. And so the point of this broadcast is to ingrain in your brain that this is part of the game and that you are fighting to keep your coins from the big money bags. No, the whales and the banks don't want you to get rich. Newsflash. No, the biggest whales in this industry don't want the little guys to win. Newsflash. No, the trillionaires and the billionaires are not on your team. They haven't been ever in history. Newsflash. And so when they can manipulate the price, when leverage in this industry gets overblown and everyone's being too risky, too greedy, as we saw over the last few days, this is what happens. However, does this mean that this is a permanent dent on this movement? No, absolutely not. And quite frankly, let's go through this because the reality is, is that I'm look, we have 18% on or 19.5%, almost 20% on Polkadot, Uniswap's down, Chainlink's down bad down super bad. Um, these are core, you know, Uniswap, Chainlink. Um, these are core infrastructure for the for the uh, the crypto ecosystem. Ethereum down 12%, right? These are juicy discounts, right? I believe that Ethereum is a healthy big five-figure coin. I believe Bitcoin is a six-figure coin. If you believe that, then these are discounts, right? And as we start going down, you'll start seeing big coin after big coin getting crushed. And so if you're able to counter trade the market, counter trade the emotion of the market, then you'll be in good shape. You just need to understand that, yeah, how all the way to the bottom? No, no, sir. No, sir. Um, the point is that what we need to do in these times is to zoom the F out. Zoom the F out here, right? Let's go ahead and zoom out. This is what we're looking at. This is what the chart looks like, right? And we are still... We are still here above the 200 day exponential moving average or moving average, right? And so we're still in quote unquote bull territory. We're still looking, obviously the bearish scenario would be to say that we're getting rejected here off of the relief rally. It just doesn't feel like a relief rally, not to me. No, it feels like a paradigm shift here happening and that there will be bumps along the road. There always are. Look at this drawdown here. Look at this drawdown here. I could go on and on. But this to me is a leverage trading crash. It's pretty simple to see. And what we need to see is what does the daily close look like? And if the daily close is healthy, you know, above 46 and a half here, you know, above this, uh, this, this low, above this local low, as you can see, this local low uh, is, is our higher low here. So this is where we came down and established a higher low. And as you can see, we never came down lower than this. Uh, where is this 46? Uh, why are the numbers so small? Gosh, 46.5, 46.8. Anyway, if we can get back over those levels, I think that it's a, a pretty healthy, uh, pretty healthy uh, just leverage washout. Uh, in the end, to me, um, I've been through so many of these ups and downs. I feel quite numb to it um, because I have, as you know, on this channel, I invest based on a thesis. And the thesis is that crypto is replacing the internet. It is a new layer on the internet. And it took all of the things that we couldn't bring onto the internet, the transactional layers, 
And now everything can be financialized, right? It's replacing every single financial mechanism in our world. And then my other thesis is that the, the actual mainstream consumer use cases for crypto are not APY, although that's really cool. The reality is, is that people don't spend their day thinking about interest rates. Most people, 99% of people just want to have a better day. They want to have a better time. They want to have their day be a little bit easier, a little bit more entertaining. And so the things like NFTs, gaming, entertainment-based use cases, like social media, all the types of things that run our web to environment services, they are going to be the things that power the next wave of true crypto mainstream adoption. And so understanding that you're still not even 1%, probably a, a tenth of a percent maybe through this journey of establishing a Web3 economy for services and entertainment, well, the, the bets are easy to, to place for me. And so on days like this, I'm going to go hunting. I'm going to go hunting deep into the bags and trying to find those projects with working products, with interesting looking tech, stuff that looks like it's about to be rolled out soon that looks really, really good, you know, specifically in gaming. And if there are juicy discounts there, then God bless it. Because to me, this is going to be something that reverses. Usually these flash crashes are not something that is necessarily indicative of a whole market trend. I mean, pretty clearly what we're seeing is that this was in induced by leverage trading. This is a leverage trading phenomenon. So understanding that and preparing for what happens next, I think is utterly, utterly critical. So don't let the whales steal your coins. Now, if we start closing um, like down here in the low 30s and we start really nosediving there, that would be really scary, super scary. Um, but again, I don't think that, you know, I personally am of the belief that this is a leverage trading flash crash and that we will recover. Um, so let's hop in right now into some comments. Let's go back into the, the, uh, the chart mode here. I'll bring back in this screen um, and we'll go ahead and make myself small. Let's go ahead and get some comments up here. Matic, super fire. Elliot, you should take a look at HODL God. Cool, I will. Most of my position were stop lost out. Yeah, so that's it. I mean, again, if you use a stop loss, then you're trading more safely. But understand that trading with leverage in general is just a professional game. Unless you're a professional trader, like Crown, my buddy, you should not be trading with leverage period, end of story. It's that simple. If you're not a professional, if you haven't been doing this for years and years and you're using leverage, then you will lose money, 100%. Guarantee it. Yeah, maybe, who knows? I don't know, bold prediction. Anyway, the point is, if you're looking at like short-term price action, if you're looking at short-term price action on any of these coins, then in my opinion, you're doing it wrong because you're just be spending all day sweating over charts. And remember, there are whales with billions and trillions of dollars out there that want to mess with your head. They want to make things look one way so they can slam you the other way. They want to make things look bearish so you sell and then they pump. They want to make things look bullish so you, so you buy and then they dump. And if you're using leverage, then you won't be able to just hold on. You won't be able to hold on. You'll be in a bad, bad place. So, um, am I still bullish on multiplier? I have to check in. It's been a long time since I checked in on that coin. Um, do you think Ether Lambos is good to pick up now? I'll have to check in on Ether Lambos. I actually don't own any Ether, Ether Lambos. I, I aped a, <laughs> I considered a very, 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 uh, <laughs> very significant amount of uh, historic NFTs. So I think I'm like well allocated there. Um, how do I show this comment? Do I think Phantom and Soul? Yeah, Phantom and Soul had amazing bounce backs. Um, yep, yeah, Elrond has some good fundamental news with their, L rounds just pushing. Um, what do I think of Wax? I haven't looked at Wax in a while. Obviously, they're an early NFT project, but they just are not really part of the conversation these days. Um, yes, this is it. This comment summarizes it all. Now, if you guys can appreciate this comment and understand the importance of it, risk management. This is what trading is. So when people say that they're traders, every good trader I know, every professional trader out there that I know, they don't call themselves a trader. They call themselves a risk manager. That's what you're doing. You're managing an insane amount of risk when you're trading in crypto, especially with leverage. So if you understand how important this is, smash that like button, destroy it, because people need to hear this. People need to hear this. Risk management is the absolute most important factor in successful trading. That's it. Now, of course, People will say, people will say, um, and I need to sort of show this here. People will say that this was the top. People will say that this was the absolute top. Um, here, let me get this. Uh, let me get this out. Um, 
and I will I will bring this up because this is my buddy. Uh, Ran uh, texted me this, or, or I texted with Ran about this uh, after he said this, which is that loot is a top. Now, of course, loot was the project we covered. Uh, that was just the text boxes, and it inspired everybody. Vitalik was tweeting about it. Alexis was tweeting about it. Everyone's building on it. VCs aped in, and it's crazy expensive. Uh, but it was really the concept that really set everyone's minds on fire of of just a building block, not even like the creative for an NFT. So I texted, <laughs> I texted Ran. I don't think that'll age well. Um, obviously, I, I texted, I, I responded, "What about Blute?" Because Blute was just a uh, uh, a derivative. Uh, it was more of a joke because you know. Anyway. Um, this is all super experimental. And as I say, every time these experimental NFTs are certainly, we have no idea what's going to happen. Certainly. Um, but he did text me back and he said, I told you so when we crashed. Um, I'm not convinced that that what we saw was the top, but I, I did want to talk about this. The level of degeneracy going on in NFTs is scary um, because even with altcoins, you could at least sell them. But when the liquidity dries up in NFTs for a lot of these projects, you won't be able to sell at all. You won't actually even if you're 60, 70% down on the floor price, no one's buying the floor. So it'll be hard to even sell. So that's what I do worry about is with NFTs, as I've said the whole time, you absolutely must understand that the, un that the store of value argument, the actual uh, long lasting financial asset uh, view of these different pieces of the crypto ecosystem, NFTs, we don't know. We do not know how much a JPEG is going to hold its value. Now, I do believe CryptoPunks are in the Citadel. I do believe Bored Apes are going to last. I do believe Artblocks Fidenzas are going to last. But the list of blue chips in NFT land is very, very, very short. And to understand and to think that these are secure long-term investments is foolish. Now, why do I believe in NFTs with utility? Why do I believe that Axie Infinity, for example, is probably going to keep on going and the music's not going to skip a beat? Well, we saw this. We saw this back in the beginning of the crash in May. The whole market, the whole market went, let just completely plunge. Where's AXS? The whole market plunged. And what did we see out of Axie Infinity? We saw magic. We saw magic out of Axie Infinity. I mean, look at the chart before. And what did we see? This is the May crash. This is the May crash. You can barely even see it. You know, I'll make myself small here. This is not movie magic here. You can barely even see the May crash here for Axie Infinity. It's non-existent compared to what happened next. And why? Why is that? The reason is, and the reason is, is because Axie Infinity has had more revenue than almost the rest of everything else in crypto combined. And it goes back to what I was saying, which is users, user adoptions. People are using the product. Why? Because it's a game. It's fun. You can earn money. That's simple. It's that simple. So when you actually have users, nothing can stop you. And that's why I believe all of this is noise and you should be finding the games that are going to be able to hold users because then there's a next Axie Infinity and there's an Axie Infinity after that and there's an Axie Infinity after that. And that's not to say that Axie Infinity won't continue to grow and be magical. I believe it will. It's, it's, got, it's on a warpath. But the model here of combining fun with money is just getting started. And this is going to be the biggest industry, not just in crypto, but I believe that the world has ever seen and so on days like today, you can't help but think that there's a lot of discount shopping to be done, a lot of discount shopping to be done. And even if we start to really plunge, as soon as Bitcoin stabilizes, as soon as we get that stability in Bitcoin, we can see a massive ramp like we did for Axie Infinity. Remember here, look, as soon as we got stability here, it was, it was not happiness, but it was stability at least in Bitcoin and Ethereum. And we get this move out of Axie Infinity. And so that's what I think is going to happen is while things are plummeting, you get these juicy discounts. Axie went from about 10 bucks down to, was it three bucks? You got a 70% discount there. And then you got, what is it? A 30 X. So that's, what's going to happen is there are going to be projects that get completely discounted to the tune of 70, 80% as these crashes happen. But eventually after a crash, even if things get really bearish, there will be a period of boringness. And in that period of boringness, low transaction fees, that's when the NFT and gaming projects will absolutely take flight. And so I'm preparing for that. I'm not getting shaken. I'm getting excited because my thesis is clear. I know what five years from now looks like. I know what 10 years from now looks like. I know it in my heart and in my soul. I see it when I go to sleep at night. And so I'm not shaken by this. I'm excited by it. And I hope you guys understand that when you have a thesis, these are the moments that it comes and pays dividends.
So if you learned something from this, if you got value out of this, please smash that like button. This isn't meant to be an exhaustive stream. I'll definitely jump into some comments here. Um, but if you guys enjoyed this, smash that like button. If you got some value out of it, if this made you feel like you understand the market better, please smash that like button because these are the times where you actually learn and grow. Pain is how you learn. Pain is how you grow. And this is a painful day in the market. But if you actually learn to view it right, it's a great day in the market because you'll be growing. How are we feeling about UFO? Same deal. If they're able to uh, if they're able to put out their project and they're able to actually get users, then this is all a a, a molehill, right? All a molehill. Um, what else we got? Where can I watch the game stream uh, you make? Uh, we're going to be doing it tomorrow. I'm going to put up a, uh, a coming soon, uh, very, very soon later today. Uh, Alex Becker and I are going to be dropping so much knowledge on you. You better have your pens and papers ready. You better, you better be recording it, watching it again. Bought some dead fellas today. Cool. I don't have any dead fellas. All right. Everyone's just dropping random, random projects now. Thoughts on gambling apes. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, yep, this is it. In the end, guys, it's pretty simple. Um, these opportunities in the market come when there are massive, massive insecurity. And just so you know, I'm not even convinced that this is a true crash. It feels very artificial. It feels very fake. It feels like people are just getting greedy at the top here. But we just got smashed down three months ago. You guys don't remember that? I think everyone should remember that. That was, we had a bear market. Everyone's just calling it a bear market. It's the easiest way to call it because that's what it was. It was a bear market, but not for gaming and crypto, not for gaming and NFTs rather. Why am I so long gaming and NFTs? Why did I even start being interested in gaming and NFTs? It was the bear market of 2018. I was convinced then that gaming and NFTs wouldn't bear if they were fully active. I was right. Four years before it happened, three years before it happened. So I'm not going to be shaken now, now that I've seen factual evidence, billions and billions of dollars in activity proving that my thesis is right. So this is not scary to me. I hope it's not scary to you. Again, we could go much lower, but I'm looking at gaming and NFT projects and I have a lot of exciting news coming. I have a lot of exciting news coming around gaming and NFT stuff, not just for my own project or the project I founded, but for the space as a whole. So make sure you're here tomorrow for me and Alex Becker's stream. Of course, I hope you guys are having a great day. Try not to let the red stuff get you down. Try to see it as opportunities. I personally do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please smash that like button. It's the only thing I ask. It's the way to support the channel. I really appreciate it. If you guys are looking for the best information, if you want to get into the best coins and the best projects and learn about how to position yourself to get ahead of the biggest trend that has ever hit the world, which is, in my opinion, crypto gaming, then you're going to want to subscribe and put that bell notification on because this stuff is going to move fast. It's just the reality. Once the cat gets out of the bag, you know, you'll know you still get, obviously, early entries because, to be honest, this trend is going to be multi-year, multi-decade. Uh, but you're definitely going to want to be having that bell notification on because uh, time is important. This is time-sensitive moments here. I still feel like we're in full bull mania, especially if we bounce hard here. So keep your eyes on the charts. Stay active out there. Keep yourself safe. Uh, make sure to smash that like button. And if you guys want more up-to-date information, follow me on Twitter at Elio Trades. The link is in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you soon. I'll be having another another video come out today. So I'll, I'll see you guys very soon. Take care.